right. All right. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ellen, and my speech is going to be on grass-fed beef. It makes sense. Uh, the last time you ate a steak or a hamburger, did you think about where the beef came from or how it was raised or fed? Did you wonder if it was safe to eat? Since we are all in charge of our own health, doesn't it make sense to know where your food comes from? Today I will talk specifically about how beef in the United States is raised, what the animal eats, and consequently what we eat, and why grass-fed beef is safer and healthier than corn-fed beef. <coughs> this guy here is a grass-fed cow. He looks very happy, doesn't he? Okay, so the American Grass-Fed Association defines grass-fed products as food products from animals that have only eaten mother's, mother's milk and grass from birth to harvest with no antibiotics, no hormones, and no confinement. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, grass-fed animals during their life receive the majority of nutrients from grass. The USDA does not limit the use of antibiotics, hormones, or other pesticides. I found that very interesting. Although I see evidence of grass-fed beef in supermarkets, most of, most of the beef sold in supermarkets is corn-fed, according to the American Grass-Fed Association. We as consumers shop supermarkets, assuming that products, their products are, have high safety standards. For the most part, this is true. However, there are many steps taken before beef shows up wrapped in a neat little package. Okay, something about cows. Cows are ruminators. That is, they have a unique ability to digest grass and hence produce grass-fed beef. Cows have been doing this for thousands of years. They are able to do this because of the first of four chambered <coughs> stomach called the rumen. A lot of people think that cows have four stomachs. In fact, they have one huge stomach with four chambers. So the rumen, which is the first part of the stomach, converts the cellulose and grass into protein, according to Michael Pollan. So when did we start feeding cows corn? Well, prior to World War II, uh, cattle roamed pastures and ate grass simply put. Back then it took four to five years for a cow to reach, for a cow to reach um, maturity and grow enough to be slaughtered. Post-World War II, farmers had an excess of corn, so they, they fed it to the cows and discovered that, that the uh, corn fattened up the cows so then they were quicker to grow, quicker to slaughter, and quicker payment. So they started putting cows on feedlots, and the feedlot is basically a city of cows, uh, along with, and they started putting cows on feedlots, feedlots along with hundreds and thousands of other cattle, where there is basically zero grazing, with the exception of the calves in the first six months, drinking their mother's milk and nibbling on grass. After the calves are weaned, they're then put on back grounding pens and taught actually how to eat corn. Because cows are sent to feedlots in confined spaces, there is a greater risk of infection. So low doses of antibiotics are mixed in with the corn feed, as well as growth hormones. These routine antibiotics for disease prevention contribute to the presence of resistant bacteria, such as Escherichia coli. <laughs> or E. coli as we know it, 0157. This is a picture of a feedlot, and it's actually not the worst one I've seen. So you can compare, compare to a regular grazing pasture. These cows have absolutely no room to, uh, to move around. First of all, there's, I don't see any grass. And where they're fed is an actual, an actual trough. Because of corn feed, growth hormones, and antibiotics, cows gain weight and are sent to slaughter much quicker. These growth hormones and antibiotics are in the meat that we consume. We've all heard um, some stories about how girls are maturing faster now. 